Hi. Hi. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Well, I see we've got a welcoming committee. Yes. This is Benito and Zion. It's my two friends. <laughs> Thanks for having me here. Yeah, thank you for coming. What can you tell us about this place? Where are we? Um, well, we're at Casa de Milagros. Oh. I'm saying that right? Yes. I think I am. Um, yeah, this is, uh, of course, the Miracles community of David Hofmeister. And I've been staying here now for about 10 days. I'm leaving tomorrow. And um, yeah, I initially came here to shoot my video and I just felt a pull for the remaining days to be here and just to fully surrender into whatever this place has to offer. So mm. yeah. Oh wow, that's well what that's what quite a switch actually, you know, coming down for the music video and, and then suddenly just feeling called to be in the community and I mean, what is this community like for you? Um, wow, yeah, it's, it's, it's just this place where, where there's just, I feel like so much support for awakening because like everybody's on that same path mm. and everybody is just, oh, let's walk a bit. Okay, <laughs> we're going to get a tour. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a great place for mind training because everybody is, is so um, dedicated to their awakening and to using everything for their forgiveness practices and yeah I was before here before I came here I was staying in this beautiful place in um, Quantico this huge mansion I had my own room and right the pool right in front of me and that was <laughs> right. amazing it was it was great especially because I was just I just released my album the light has come right before I got here to Mexico and um, it f I felt really tired and I felt like, oh, I just need some time to really relax. And that was the perfect place for it. Mm. And, um, but after a week or so, I felt like, I don't think I'm only here for the video. And I think I'm here for more. So mm. then I got here. <laughs> wow. And so you've been here yeah. for how many days, did you say? Um, I think about 10, 10 days. 10 um, days. Yeah, last week, Sunday. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's really cool because like y integrating into the community means like it's a huge focus on projects and like even just responsibilities around the house and there's a huge buzzsaw behind us. So <laughs> mind training, working with the mind training, maybe we'll just keep walking through these beautiful sure. gardens. But I'd love to pick your mind or pick your brain about just how what this experience has been like for you and like really, you know, dropping into community for anybody at any time is always <laughs> kind of a I want to say radical thing right. you know it's it's just so different than the way that most people live at least that's what I've found and right. so to have more of a focus on on using everything for the mind training I mean certainly that's the way if we're into the course that we're trying to live our lives but really coming into this place where I mean you're looking at 24 7 everything around you this kale was planted for the yeah. purpose of mind training right and this video we're filming now, Purpose of Mind Training and right. just extending the miracle. So yeah, tell us what daily life has been like here for you. Um, yeah, daily life. Well, the mornings always start with meditation, reading a part from um, the textbook from A Course in Miracles and then ending it off with um, the workbook lesson from the day. So mm -hmm. that I, I've really, yeah, I really enjoy that, that just that morning of quiet time. And um, that's not much different actually than what I'm used to. Um, I also do that back home, but it's it's nice to just be with people mm. that also that are also doing that. To just do that together, I feel it's very helpful. The joining, um, and after that, there's most of the time there's expression sessions, and yeah, that is the, one of the biggest thing that I really learned um, in the community of David Hofmeister, and and not just here because I already learn about that last year um, at the Tabula Rasa Mystery School. Mm. So that was like the first time that I heard about no private thoughts and no people pleasing. And I was like, that just blew my mind really because I just, yeah, I was never used to really sharing um, my dark thoughts. It was always, yeah, just like, what would people think if I'm saying this or it's not appropriate or you can't say something like that or yeah, just, um, yeah, tuck that away or um, and to really learn in those expression sessions that everything is welcome, that, that whatever 
yeah, all of those thoughts, yeah, you need to bring them to the light. And oh, mm. it's just, it's just like, that's one of the most healing practices. And, and, and I'm practicing that also now home with my boyfriend and with my two best friends who are also into the course. So we really, I really took that, like, that's a real, like one of the biggest practices that I feel like, oh, that's so practical to just put into practice and to really practice that with each other. And that, that's just been beautiful. And yeah, so, so I see how that goes here. And then I see how I still find that um, challenging sometimes. I was, I was expressing the other day, like how I still feel sometimes um, attached to this identity of Neda Boyne, like the artist and how I feel like it's, it's like I maybe can't trust to just expose everything with people that I don't know or people that might um, like even though it's like no private thoughts so what should it matter like I still feel like there's a part of me that does matter if some things get out and like what would other people say of me so like this feeling of not having the safety of fully being able to express and then to be with people in the community and also <laughs> in the bunk bed because even when I came here I was like I was I was just feeling so so inspired like I need to just be here for the remaining days I didn't mm -hmm. feel like it was it was helpful for me to stay at Quantico and just enjoy like it was basically almost like a vacation it would be then and I I didn't feel it was helpful and then <laughs> Michael said like okay well there are no more rooms left only the bunk room and I was like perfect like really like there was this part of my ego that was like bunk beds like, I gotta sleep in a bunk bed and like what is this you're giving up your your private room for this and but it was it just felt so clear like no this is perfect this is exactly what I need and yeah it's just so beautiful to see like also the the roommates that they they'll always just give you exactly what you need you know you get triggered by stuff and it's just such a great place to let all of that just come up and to really see that different and to really mm -hmm. go deeper within your mind like why am I projecting like this on this person and why why am I seeing this and yeah just the lessons from a few days ago it can but be but me that I'm crucifying you know I can only crucify myself and that's oh, this, this rings so true you know like all my judgments that I have on someone someone else like it, it's only hurting me like there's it's all for me and you, you really get to see that reflected here so much like oh it's all for me it's all for me and even everything that that's that is expressed by everyone like it's all there's one mind so ev everything that someone else is expressing like there's there's no new thoughts Byron Katie always says that like there's no new thoughts there's only recycled thoughts and yeah it's just oh. mm -hmm. like, I just feel like wow um yeah just beautiful I have a <laughs> I thought maybe we should just pop oh, in and see who's right. in this room here the tech room we call let's it let's go let's go to the tech room yeah, so this place is for social media. And we have here, oh, we have here my bunk room roommate, Carolina. Okay. <laughs> and Calico, and Marcha, and Dan. It looks like we've dropped in for social Raphael. media hour, which is something the whole community <laughs> takes part in. Yeah. So Marga, <laughs> Dan, and Raphael, Carolina, and Calico. <laughs> like, what's... Yeah. I think yeah. everybody would really like to know, like it looks so much the same as, you know, just getting onto Facebook and posting, but like what is really happening here? I think we're, we're extending, mm. you know, we're reaching out and we're being blessed as we do that, you know, it's, it's a, a wonderful experience of grace and yeah, we're putting out messages that are that are here that, so that people can be aware of what's available. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Mm. You know, every time I have something to say, I have to remember that it's first and foremost a message for myself. So it's the same with the social media. Every post that I make is really just, it's like, I'm getting anchored in the present moment and and really sinking into what I'm actually writing and listening to what I'm saying like taking my own advice basically mm -hmm. so for me social media is 
just learning to actually apply what I you know all those ideas that that I have that I learn not just to talk about it so it's just reinforcing it in my own mind and yeah it's a great experience of releasing the pride arrogance and unworthiness in my mind mm. just getting really honest with myself basically yeah, I was just thinking too, like there's so much healing that happens in these centers with us all being together as Neda was just sharing, like, you know, coming together and like having the experience of like, oh my God, can I let these thoughts up? These are total strangers and just really trusting that, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to carry you through it and that they are really released and gone. And I find that it's so important for these extension functions, like to pop you out of whatever might be going on in your mind or it's just like the sharing, the sharing of, of real thoughts. So... Oh yeah, thank you, Carolina. Thank you. Mm, okay. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, thank guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> this is one of my favorite spots, actually, because I like to eat all the basil off these plants. But oh, that's basil? It's basil. Yeah, so this garden yeah, was... I did taste a little of that yesterday. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this, this is the same as any other project, the same as social media or building a website. It's just, okay, how would you have us use this space, Holy Spirit, and like planting all of these things and just, you know, it's not about growing the food or anything like that. It's just more about like, this is just what the guidance is. So right. in that way, it's like it helps you release the personal and whims and preferences and that sort of thing. So, we are standing in front of the banana grove. You yeah. are here. This building behind here we call the banana grove. And you can hear the light has come. You are saved. And you can save the light has come. You're at peace And wherever you go You bring peace The light has come The light has come For Every Saturday actually there's a movie gathering yep. People from around can also come there um, Yeah, that's one of the Another like beautiful thing to use movies, I love I love that from David. Like the whole movie, you watch his guy to enlightenment. Like oh yes, oh I love it. Just just use movies for awakening. It's just uh, such a great tool to just mm. see all of your stuff playing out by different characters, like seemingly different characters, but just to see that again, it's all about you. Mm. And yeah, that yeah, I love that. And again. When you're, when you're doing it with more people, I feel like it, it's, it's, it's a chance to let it sink in even a little bit deeper than when you're just watching a movie by yourself. Because it's just, again, this invitation to, like, there's so much support then to just let everything come up. Mm -hmm. exactly. I just love them. I, I love, I love the movies, too. I love it. Ah. Every time it just hit home for me. So it's pretty noisy here, actually. Like you'd think for basically like a modern day monastery, which is essentially what this is, there's, you know, you have a nice peaceful, quiet atmosphere. So what is it like with all the noise? Like we've got the buzzsaw, we've got the cars going by, sometimes very large trucks right. rattling everything, and then tons of dogs and just right. like, at any given time, lots and lots of noise. What is right. that like? Yeah, for me, uh, luckily I already had the, the mind training in that a lot because I live like right next to a subway and right next to the road in the big city in Holland, Rotterdam. So I'm hearing cars and sirens and everything. Um, so yeah, that experience with that was when I just moved there. So I can imagine maybe I would have had it here if I was living like in a very quiet place. Um, I had just so much judgments about like, oh, this, I want a place where it's quiet and I need my rest and I'm like close the windows, but then it was too hot again. And like, <laughs> now thinking back on like what David says, when you're having hot thoughts, <laughs> like it's not really hot, your, your head is hot. And I just had this, this experience um, 
when I was walking in the street, it was already a couple of years ago, and I was walking outside, and I was hearing sirens and like a lot of loud noises, but I was also hearing birds um, and something else like nature that I that I judged as like that's a good sound, and cars and those things that those are bad sounds, and all of a sudden I was just hearing them both and like both of them were neutral and like totally like absolutely beautiful mm. like the bird sound and there was an alarm going off from the car and the alarm wasn't wasn't sounding anything worse or better than the bird and i was like wow this is amazing like everything was just one and from from then on like that was like a really like a beautiful experience and then i thought like wow it's really our judgment about what we hear about what we see that that determines our experience so I feel like here right now I don't I'm not bothered at all by the sound like mm -hmm. I really love it I don't even hear it anymore but yeah that is something that I feel like it's it's very true for me and I see it in everything like it's all it's only my judgment that can really really hurt me so I think that's also that was the main reason um, or the main reason like when I when I came here I also told told Susan like I really want to be the student because I just had so many times um, when I was younger like I would never I never wanted to be the student I was always the teacher and like even in primary school like I was so stubborn and like teachers couldn't tell me anything like I was always right I always knew best and I still see that, I can still see like whatever, like even in the kitchen when I have to cook and prepare, like things are just done a certain way. And like, I feel like in community, it's really about surrendering to what's given and really um, following instructions, following clear instructions. <laughs> and yeah, for me, <laughs> somebody that always feels that knows better, it's like, why are you guys doing it this way? You should do it this way. You know, like this is much easier, this is much better. And to just really witness that and to, um, yeah, to just really be the student and really be open for that anybody has something to teach you. Like, how, no matter how old they are, no matter how young they are, no matter, like, whatever. Like, really, again, like, that they're just all there for you. And to really be open and let go of that whole, I know best. And mm. just to really surrender. And, and I had a lot of fun with it to just witness my mind hearing, like, oh, I'm just going to do it like this. Or, you know, just... That's to <laughs> put the dust back onto the carpet and just to really follow direct instructions and um, yeah. So every morning we come here for meditation and for reading parts of the course or listening to David read the course. So you need to take off your shoes before okay. you go in this room. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, most of the times I just sit here so I can see the screen. And then um, you can see the, the text of the course on the screen and David reads it. And after that, there's the lesson of the day. And then maybe a light bulb needs to, <laughs> needs to be fixed. It's so or cool actually, because <laughs> it's like, in a way, I feel like there can be this interpretation or this idea that mis it's like a mystical community. Right. And it totally is, because the purpose is underneath everything. Right. And I feel like there are still are the very practical things, like Definitely. a light bulb needs to be changed. And right. like or cleaning the, the pool. That was my job, to like go with a big net and just <laughs> get all of the stuff out of the pool, which, yeah, it's an impossible task to ever get the pool fully clean. So that was also interesting. <laughs> the mind training. <laughs> It's like symbol of the mind, like the thoughts. Like you know, you you remove some thoughts, and then boom, right? The next leaf. Yeah, the next leaf is dropping. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it just has been a very interesting time to witness everything and just to see, like, okay, how am I gonna incorporate this, and what am I gonna do with this, and mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like I've already learned so much in such a short time, and. I think I think that's also like just already you saying like that you want to come here it already shows like so much willingness and like then you're already halfway there to just show that willingness like I want to be here and I want to really fully surrender to my awakening and mm. yeah I think that's half the work at least 
I would agree with you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what are your plans after after this? Where are you headed? Yeah, so um, I'm heading for Los Angeles tomorrow, giving a concert on Sunday. Um, and my cousin lives there, so I haven't seen her in a while. So that's really beautiful that I can reconnect with her. Um, going to San Francisco right after. And then I'm heading to Utah for the Strawberry Fields Festival. So mm. oh, I'm so excited for that, really. Oh, I'm so looking forward to that, to just... Yeah, I love the place at the monastery and mm. it's just so, I don't know, there's something about that place like so magical and mystical and um, yeah, I love to share my songs and I'm also giving a voice liberation retreat together with Emily. Yeah, that's great. So my life has always been like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like when people tell me like, what's your five year plan or you're supposed to have a five or ten year plan as an artist. I'm like. No, I really don't. Five minute plan. I really don't. Of course, there are stuff already planned for next year. I'm giving a concert in New York and I'm going to the a ACIM conference in Boston and that's all very excited. But other than that, like even the video now, like we shot the vid video here, but there wasn't any time anymore for editing. So even that, I'm like, no idea, like who's going to edit, <laughs> when, how is that going to happen, who's going to finance that, how is that, no idea, but I'm like really like, I don't need to know and I also don't know what's best for me, so mm. it's just this really stepping back and yeah, letting him lead the way. And when you, had so when, when you have so much experiences of while you're doing that, that it's so much better than your own solutions. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like every time I, I, ca I caught myself doing that, it's like, oh yeah, I think, I think my plan is better again than spirits. Okay, <sighs> step back again, let him lead the way, and yeah, it's just much, much better when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> when I just got here, I told my boyfriend, like, I feel like a nun, <laughs> like a little bunk bed. <laughs> it's so but, funny like, you all say the stones, that. You know, like, I yeah. don't know, felt like this nun life coming back to me. <laughs> it's so funny you say that, because before I landed in community, I had these feelings, like, I, I was living with my parents, and the whole parable is not so important, but basically I was just having these feelings of, like, do I need to become a nun? Right. But I was having, you know, all these miracles and the stuff coming up, and I was like, this doesn't look like any nunnery that I'm familiar with. Like, it's not a traditional place, but it's like, it's like that inner silence is what's really calling. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we also have a little nice little library type of mm. space going on over here. I really love this place to just sit and read. Mm. And Adriana, we have all the good books here. Yeah. And I just love all of the little reminders everywhere. You know, it's like the heart and just I love it. Yeah, I love all the little reminders to truth. House of Miracles. Right, so here's one of them. We're today right. we're on lesson 199, so everybody in the whole house, as Neda was saying, comes together for the lesson and, and here it is, we just have these reminders all throughout the house, throughout the property, all day. So this is the lunch area, and this is also during lunch there are expression sessions. We got you so. again, Dan. We got you again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if anything is on your heart, you get a chance during lunch. Most of the time, sometimes there's silence during lunch, but most of the time there are expression sessions, and you can just <sighs> lay whatever you want on the altar and just. 
yeah, ask for guidance and expose all of those crazy thoughts you think that are so serious. <laughs> yeah, just shine light on whatever needs some light. At least that's what it looks like. <laughs> and this is the kitchen. And Anne. And um, we have a little, let me see if there was actually something I needed to do today. Yeah, I was actually on cleanup, but that's good. I don't need to clean up anywhere. Yay, because I'm with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is where you eat. So Anne, <laughs> tell us about what you're doing. I'm cooking um, chicken thighs, chili chicken thighs and fried potatoes. Beautiful. And what is it you're really doing? What I'm really doing is really tuning in. This is the first time that I've done lunch on my own. There's usually two of us. So I'm really tuning in to feel, you know, what feels intuitive and how to move through the kitchen and um, yeah, just feel moved through. Hmm. So it's an experiment for me. I'm not practiced in that, but I'm trying. <laughs> so that's what I'm really doing. Oh. Practicing to be with God. Thank you so much, Anne. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the bunk room is right next to the kitchen. So it's nice if you're hungry during the night. <laughs> so this is my bunk bed. Very nice. Welcome. Welcome. So what's your experience been like in a bunk room with others and the mind training and just like the close proximity with one another and the, hey, I needed to take a shower. Why did you take a shower? And, you know, like I need the bathroom and turn off that light. And, right. you know, just the, the normal things that maybe, you know, you're living with somebody, but they're not even conscious because the purpose right. isn't there. But now suddenly you live with these ones who are right. also practicing. Right. Yeah, it, it has been good so far in the sense of that I knew why, why I got here. Like I knew like I want to just use this time for, for yeah, going in deeper and really just embrace everything that I could embrace, you know, not walking away from every, any learning opportunities. And I just felt like, yeah, this, this is the place to be for that. And um, yeah, luckily I didn't have much roommates. Like I can imagine like if all these beds were filled then that's two, four, six, six people. Um, I don't know if that ever happened, but <laughs> I'm sure it would be quite different. So now I was only sharing the room with Carolina, <laughs> which was uh, very good. So yeah, again, I feel like there are, there are never coincidences because um, yeah, she, 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 she did and she, she can trigger a lot of annoyance or something in me and also um, express that during the expression sessions and it's just it's just a great practice for me to like right away um, I remember a few nights ago or something um, what it was there's also things here like with with leader and following roles so sometimes you have to do something together like for instance in the kitchen or setting up the halo room for a movie or whatever and somebody is the leader and somebody is the follower and uh, I've always been the follower while I was here and that's also what I wanted um, but yeah of course that that also raises up some stuff inside of me like I feel like somebody is supposed to lead me in a certain way and uh, otherwise I won't listen and <laughs> I'll get rebellious <laughs> and you know I mean like who are you to talk to me like that or whatever so um, yeah it, it's it's yeah, I just feel like it has been a great practice for me to like, not like in the past, I used to just like really sit on that and like really like let all of that eat on me and just like not express that. And like even with friends or like close people, like I would, I would, I would never like, I was always afraid of confrontation. And ever since I really learned about the no private thoughts, I feel like oh, it still frightens me sometimes, but I, I'm so motivated to, to do it and to not have any private thoughts and to not have anything between us. Like, I don't want to have anything, because you can just feel the disturbance in, in, in the connection between two people when there's something that is still there and you're just pretending like it's not, like you can all feel it. There's only one mind. There really are no private thoughts. 
there, it's impossible to have private thoughts if we only, if there's only one of us. So it's, yeah, it just has been a great practice to just right away say like, hey, actually, I wasn't feeling it like this and I felt triggered by this and this and that and just really want to expose that right now and do you have time to join or, you know, like stuff like that and yeah, just, it's good. But yeah, then again, I'm saying like I'm only here for 10, 10 days so I can imagine if I would be sleeping here in this beautiful bunk bed for maybe a year, maybe it would be different because <laughs> I do, I do like to um, have my alone time as well, but between five and six, there's also time to, to go out and to just walk. And it is encouraged to do that with other people and to join. But yeah, some of these nights, I'll do, I also just went out on my own because I feel like for me, it's just, yeah, I'm feeling like I'm very sensitive. And it's it, I also need some time to just be on my own and just process everything um, and not, yeah, be also dependent on someone to join with, but also to just really be still and really join with God. Mm. and um, yeah so that that's cool that brings up an interesting question kind of what we were talking about before with like you know what do you do all day like so when when do you have time to meditate and right. like, what does that mean to you um well I think I think meditation like a traditional meditation what people see as meditation as like sitting and closing your eyes and just really connecting that it's the morning time before the lesson and during the le lesson like in the halo room uh, the workbook lesson and after that's another like 10 minutes or so to just meditate but i feel like for me it really got into a practice to see everything as a meditation to really be mindful of everything that you're doing i think that's what Anne was also saying like it looks as if you're cooking, but you're really just trying to connect with God and just, yeah, I feel like it all comes back again to that prayer. Like I'm only here to be truly helpful. And, and it, it, it looks in this moment like I'm cleaning the pool or it looks like I'm doing this interview or it looks like you're feeding the dog or whatever. But honestly, like your only true mission is to be truly helpful and to extend the love that you are. And I think like that's a constant meditation and also in, in the communication with others, like whatever comes up, that's a meditation to watch, watch your mind and see when something comes up, see that there's a trigger and to not identify with it and not to go in with it. I mean, you can feel it, of course, like it's not, it's also not right to go in the whole, everything's an illusion because that's like, that's like such an unworthy form of denial and you, you won't mm -hmm. get much out of it if you, if you just say that everything's an illusion because we don't experience it as an illusion so you know I love David also says sometimes you gotta feel it to heal it <laughs> you know and that's so true but yeah it's a constant meditation to watch your mind and everything that you're doing whatever it is to see what's coming up and to every time just step back and let him lead the way and yeah go back to truth and unwind your mind back to God <laughs> So much, Adam. It's just been so wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Forgive